Good morning. Welcome to Visionary Aging. I'm Mary Winters. I'm a gerontologist and the owner of About Senior Solutions. Get your coffee. I have peppermint tea today. It just seemed very fitting, kind of been chilly today or this week here in California. I don't know what it's been like where you are. Maybe you can share that. But I just want you to know about the amazing power you have to make your own decisions and to live your best life ever. And there's so many resources out there. I wanted to, we put the show together so that we can share some of those resources. Uh, we plan weddings, we plan retirements, we plan all sorts of things, birthday parties, but are you planning the way you want to age? And I wanna make sure that you're able to do that well, successfully and get everything in there that you want. Uh, we're really considered more of the hub of services for seniors and kind of a conductor, if you will, of the orchestra. We orchestrate all the services and make sure that you're getting exactly what you need based on what you can afford and what will keep you safe and what you want. In fact, I have a really cool little diagram. Let me see if I can find that because I think this is really helpful. Um, this is what we do for our planning. We look at what your wishes are what will keep you safe and what your budget may be for your care or support, or maybe you don't need any care right now. So uh, we're looking at uh, really nothing as far as um, any kind of support, but you might want to use those finances to travel. So in that really center place there, we have that happy face and that's the plan that we want to create for you out of those three things. And you can see the wheel or the around the wheel, the outside of the wheel, you can see that arrow. And just as time changes, things change. We might have something temporary and go back to uh, where we were before, or we might have um, a decline of some kind and things change. So those little things inside of our circle change too. So we're here to keep planning for your whole life. So that's great. We just want to make sure that you get everything that you need. So let me see here. Um, we are going to have Melinda on today. Steve is going to be a little bit late with us. So Stephen will share our caregiver question a little bit later on. And we're going to talk a little bit about the holidays and some of the things that you can do to support your well-being. We can still have fun and enjoy, but some things that we can help just build your awareness about what you might be dining on through the holidays. And Melinda's going to help us with that because she is a super pro and a master in nutrition and fitness and the owner of the strength shop, which I attend. I love it. I was there yesterday. And we also will celebrate a very special birthday for someone who just turned 100 or will be turning 100 on Saturday. So we're excited to share that about him. And let's go ahead and you know what? I think I'm gonna share a little something too because we're also starting a program uh, called Shape Up. And we want you to be able to engage either in groups in a community where you may live or we will come to your home and support you, uh, not support you, we will we will provide some one-to-one -one interactions. So it's sport, but some fabulous one-to-one -one interaction with something that you will really enjoy because it's specific to what you want. So let's go ahead and I'll just play this really quickly. Yep. <laughs> So feel free to give us a call and we can give you more information on our program, the Shape Up program. Oh, here, here's our, here, here's what Shape Up means. Here, I'll go ahead and throw this in here too. So really, as a gerontologist, I designed this program to really fit in with what research has proven to show us helps to support your longevity and well-being. So looking at your spirituality, um, your healthy life balance, this is a very large category from planning to managing your health services to your financial and legal matters uh, and feeling really like your head is in balance as well. 
it, which also kind of flows into attitude and influencers. What kind of attitude do you have and who are the people who influence you in your life? Are they positive? Are they dragging you down? My mom always used to say, I think it's time to to weed the friend garden when we would complain about some of our friends as kids. Uh, and then eating habits. What are what are you what are you really successful at? Uh, putting into your body to make your body healthy? Or are there some things that just one little micro change that you can make to do something a little bit better? And then how about our our united family? Or I didn't talk about physical activity. Of course, physical activity. I mean, that's kind of a no-brainer. But united family and family of any type, it doesn't mean our blood relatives, but the people you consider close to you and your family and having those connections are so important. Uh, I think there's a lot of research out right now indicating that smoking two packs of cigarettes is actually less harmful than being isolated. So you'll hear a lot more about us talking about isolation. And then purpose. What do you feel really juices you up? Uh, what can you do in support of others in regards to purpose? And that's something that we would love to go through with you in this program. So please feel free to reach out and we'll give you more information. And I think we're going to go ahead and talk a little bit about our, um, our little birthday boy today. His name is Ray. And let me go ahead and, and start talking about him. He is very, he's a veteran. He's a fabulous man. Here we go. Let me go ahead and throw some things in here about him. He lives in a Dell Webb community. It was really neat because about 75 of his residents got together and they threw this party together for him. Let me go ahead and I'll keep showing you some slides. So I know Melinda's here. I'll be able to get rid of this little film thing right here really quick. And voila, we are here. Yeah, good morning. <laughs> good morning. <laughs> so I know we, you know, they're favorites that we really love and enjoy eating for Thanksgiving. And, and that's good, especially if we're only doing that once a year. Mm -hmm. uh, and, and I really do feel strongly that 
you know, just little teeny changes can make huge, huge difference in our, our lives. And what kinds of things were you thinking about in regards to nutrition and ideas that will support us through those, those holiday big dinners and events? One of the biggest things is um, that the holiday foods aren't special. <laughs> um, most of us who who are you know watching this video um we have the resources to make or buy all of these foods whenever we want so um sometimes when people can shift that perspective it will keep them from overeating because yeah. if you you know i i came to this one time um one year i was uh, absolutely gorging myself on sweet potato souffle with the sugar and the marshmallows <laughs> because it's the dish that there's no leftovers ever because it's, you know, so great. My mom makes it so well. Um, but I realized I could make this tomorrow if I wanted to, I could just go to the store and remake it. It's there's, sure. there's no need to stuff ourselves um, because we can have, you know, all the foods that we enjoy at Thanksgiving or any holiday really any day that we want because we're, we're that privileged. So sometimes that perspective shift helps. Uh -huh. um, the other uh, uh, kind of big thing is that when we starve ourselves or we don't eat anything leading up to a mm -hmm. big meal, oh. that, that promotes binge eating. So oh, sure. Is True. So hungry. Yeah. Um, so uh, a lot of times we're doing ourselves a disservice by saving our appetite for the big meal. Mm. Um, so having some, some type of breakfast, some type of small lunch, um, leading up to it so that you're not starving going into a meal will help you eat the, you know, proper portions and you it's can always idea. have the rest for leftovers. It's so. true. Even when you're gorging on the sweet potato or whatever, the yummy thing that your mom makes, you could definitely put that into little containers and set it aside, right? Mm -hmm. Freeze it or yeah. I don't know if it freezes well, but you could just kind of set it aside and portion it out for a few extra days, maybe. Yeah, you can, can have can... you can have it for leftovers. And then, you, you know, everybody loves to have Thanksgiving leftovers. I think you can make a turkey sandwich, you know, um, there's, there's really, yeah, there's really no need for us to eat it all in one sitting. And I think one of the, one of the reasons that people really just go for it in the, you know, for the Thanksgiving meal is they've also given themselves permission psychologically to binge because they've not eaten anything. And, you know, people think like, oh, well, I didn't, you know, I didn't eat breakfast or lunch, so therefore I can eat more at dinner. And that's just not the way our body responds to food, you know, so uh, we need we need fuel. And, uh, when we, when we, you know, withhold fuel from our body, um, we become very hungry and we start craving quick fixes of sugar because our blood sugar drops. And so then you're craving sugar and you're eating a larger portion than you would normally eat. And then that overwhelms the digestive system. Sure. And so we don't absorb our nutrients as well. And we don't digest that food as well. And that can cause heartburn or, you know, gastrointestinal issues like constipation and diarrhea and just our system's not working really. That doesn't well. sound good. <laughs> yeah. So, you know, it's, it's much better to have, um, even if it's a light breakfast or light lunch. And then the third thing um, that I would say to look for this holiday season is don't feel like you need to clean your plate. Put mm. it away into leftovers. And I know that food waste is a terrible thing for many reasons, but so is stuffing food that you don't want or don't true. need into your body. Very um, true. So there's always a way to save it. Um, and if you don't like something, that's on, honestly, if you don't like something that you're eating, it's not great to force yourself to eat it. Um, it it causes, causes stress in your system and any food is meant to be pleasurable. So if it's we don't true. get pleasure from food, our brain doesn't get that satiated experience and it doesn't turn off the hunger hormone. So if you're eating That's something true. that you're not enjoying, don't eat it, you know, give it to somebody else, uh, you know, put it in a leftover box. <laughs> um, if it's something that the dog really eats, don't like, give it to the dog. <laughs> yeah. Like it's, it's not worth stuffing. And I think a lot of us are in the mindset of like, 
we don't want to waste food because well and sometimes they just don't want to hurt aunt greta's feelings with yes. her stuffing yes. that's really terrible so well, you know I, I remember talking to somebody who said he didn't know how to eat artichokes so he he would kind of chew it up and not realizing that he just kind of pulled the 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 yeah. meat away from the from the <laughs> from the leaf and <laughs> so he would stuff it kind of eat it stuff it in his pocket go to the bathroom get rid of it don't do that just go ahead and just say you're not interested in eating it <laughs> yeah or that you're full you know and i think people should respect the fact that you're full true true yeah and i think that's the other thing too you have people who want to sabotage what you don't want to eat yeah. so they may put pressure on you and just realizing that that may be an issue at your table and everybody wants you to try something and uh you know it's just come prepared with some mental tools too as far as who may be pushing those kinds of agendas and just you know mm -hmm. have a little powerful response for that you know i just don't need it today or it's lovely i had enough or you know whatever it is that yeah you know, and stick to that response yeah. whether it's yeah. like i'm i'm you know, I've got to watch this because I'm working with a health coach or I'm working with a nutritionist or I have, um, you know, directions from my doctor. And there you go. Blame it on the doctor. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Blame it on the doctor. Yeah. I mean, if it gets somebody off your back. <laughs> exactly. Exactly. I think people are being a little bit more mindful of that these days of not, you know, force feeding their family members, but, um, yeah, that, that can be a very difficult situation, especially it if is. it's somebody who's just being very lovely that you don't want to hurt their feelings because they were cooking all day. And It's true. It's true. Well, let's go ahead. I'm going to bring Steve on for a minute. We'll see what our caregiver question is, and then we'll come back and chat a little bit more. How's that? Okay. Okay. Thanks. Hey, Steve. Let's see. Where are you? There you are. Good morning. Happy Veterans Day. Good morning. Oh, yeah. Now you had your dad was in the military, right? He was. He was in the Air Force. Um, unfortunately, he was only his uh, term ended sh uh, sooner than it should have. His uh, dad passed away. My uh, oh. grandfather I never got to meet. So he passed away. My dad was two years into uh, his Air Force term. So. Oh, wow. Well, interesting. Yeah. Well, thank yeah. you for his duty because a day in the service is not easy and going through boot camp and everything else. So yeah, my, my dad was not able to be in the military, always wanted to be a Marine because his uncle was a Marine. Right. And um, we have a family that go all the way back to the Revolutionary War and the Civil War. Um, and my amazing in-laws were both in the military both um she was an army nurse and my father-in-law was a b-17 nice. pilot so um thank you for that and the wonderful families that they raised so yeah. really fortunate to be in these positions and thank you so much for all of your service so yeah. what we kind of a uncles and great uncles and aunts and great aunts that were uh, military as well so thanks up to them for all their service and some of them, um, you know, came back from from their assignments in not in the same shape that they left in. So um, that's true. Yeah. So thank you. Absolutely. For yeah. Thank you. And we have some really great resources too. Um, we can talk a little bit about that later. But what is our caregiver question today? Our caregiver question is um, it's come from, comes from a lady. Her mom has dementia. And she believes that her mom is slipping as of late, but uh, her brother doesn't see the big change and thinks it's just the way things are and the way things go. Um, and she's trying to figure out how to, um, you know, should she be worried and and how does she gauge, you know, if there's something a change, drastic, sorry, drastic change in her behavior or if it's just, you know normal course of, of business, I guess. You know, that's a great question. And I think, I think it's something that people should be aware of noticing those changes. And sometimes when somebody is with another person all the time, they may not see the changes as drastically. Like uh, you may see a very big change if you do not see your parents 
um, or a loved one um, until the holidays hit too. So you may notice a really big change in comparison to a sibling who is maybe taking care of them or sees them on a regular basis. Um, but that said, Oftentimes, we worry about whether someone might have an infection. Even with dementia, they can have a really big change in their behavior or um, uh, their functioning. So I would say if you are worried, I would just schedule a doctor's appointment for her. I would definitely ask for a, um, a, a test, a UA, a urine analysis to check and see if potentially they have a an infection. Um, maybe there's some medication that's been changed. Maybe there was a, a slight um, a, a ischemic stroke, a, a little TIA, a little mini stroke, they call them. And sometimes those don't even pick up on any kind of, or they can't be picked up on any kind of imaging, so they can't see that there was any kind of change um, versus a very major stroke. But in, in some Alzheimer's actually change differently too, where you have more rapid changes, where you have some more static kind of reduction in cognition or function, well, cognition, and but it may change much more rapidly with certain um, uh, dementia, forms of dementia too. So, and I don't know, it might be good to just explain that sometimes people say, well, my mom fortunately doesn't have Alzheimer's, but she has dementia or she doesn't have dementia, but she has such and such. And dementia is just an umbrella term, almost like um, when we say somebody has cancer, um, but they have a specific kind of cancer, Alzheimer's right. is the same way. It's a, a a type of dementia. Lewy body is a type of dementia. Vascular dementia is a type of dementia. So um, just to kind of put that in perspective too. It's a great, point. A great mom, question. You know, I, uh, to your point about the getting tested, I know my mom, when she was in a hospital, she had an infection and her behavior was so different. Mm. And she, was, she just seemed so worse off. Yeah. Um, her recollection, her, her ability just to like follow conversation um, was just drastically different. And the nurse told us that she had an infection and um, they started treating her for that. And she said that could last for, I think she said like a week or two weeks even. Mm -hmm. um, and so we we're trying to prepare ourselves mentally, you know, for that. Cause my mom's behavior was, it was like- Not nice. Yeah. 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 It can and be I'll, very stunning actually. Yeah. Yeah. She was very, I don't want to say aggressive, but she was aggressive in what she wanted to do. Whereas in mm -hmm. the past, you know, before she would, you know, we would ask her if you want to talk to somebody and, you know, she would kind of think about it and make a decision. And then when she had her infection, it was like everything she wanted to do had to be done immediately. Mm -hmm. and she was like out of it and she couldn't, you couldn't like deflect her or, you know, change her train of thought like she wanted to do, make a phone call, like she would be grabbing the phone and trying to make a phone call. <laughs> what are you doing? <laughs> yeah, yeah. And it was just very, just out of character for her. Interesting. Yeah, see? So definitely check with the doctor. Um, you can get some over-the-counter um, uh, strips to detect your urinary tract infections. Um, they're not always mm -hmm. easily available, but that's something that might help. But you'll need to talk to the doctor anyway and get antibiotics if that's the case, if somebody does have an infection. So it's just good to just call in with the doctor. And sometimes you just kind of set up a little system. It's like, oh, if I could see that there's probably something a little off. And, and then the other thing you might want to think about is it, the urinary tract infections really start from um, bacteria. Um, mm -hmm. But what can we do um, as far as... Um, self-care and managing some of that. We have some of our clients, we have them on some special programs to avoid a urinary tract infection to begin with. So um, always something to think about if it's happening frequently. So anyway, let's bring Melinda back okay. and see what she is up to um, other than making sure that we are staying healthy during our holidays. Um, and then Good we'll job. see... Let's see. I know. I know. I know. Let's see. How about Hi, Steve. Hey, Melinda. How about how about telling us what is the um, the uh, sports, sports historical? Yeah, yeah. Yeah. Okay. Well, for the Dodger fans out there, um, there's, a, there's a great season for the Dodgers. Didn't end the way they wanted to, but 
in this day in sports history in 1981, Fernando Valenzuela, who was a, at the time, rookie pitcher with the LA Dodgers. He was named Rookie of the Year, and he also won the Cy Young Award. And he was the first rookie pitcher to win the Cy Young Award. So they also won the World Series that year. So he had quite a banner uh, start to his career. Oh, yeah. I remember when he first came out. He was a uh, pretty incredible big guy, too. And yeah. he just he had just moved to California. That ball. Yeah. Yeah. Really yeah. interesting. What a, what a great career. What a great career. Yeah. Definitely. So. Great ambassador. Yeah. And then we have, let's see, we have um, our perk for the day too. So if you want to sign up for the perk, Jenny will get you set up. You can reach out to info at about senior solutions.com or you can just call our office at 626. I'm going to give my cell phone number out. It's 626-359-0108. And I, I'm disappointed they don't have um, Veterans Day, but maybe they wanted something more obscure. It's it's World Origami Day. And the pun for today is, okay, it's, it's a little, they're always corny, right? But I was going to tell you a joke about folding paper, but it's really terrible. That's pretty bad. <laughs> and then they've got the, uh, the word search there too. And then let's see what's tomorrow. Oh, tomorrow is a national happy hour day. I like that. Is that an all day event? It would be <laughs> all day. Like <laughs> yeah, that's very interesting. Yeah. Make sure, oh. make sure the restaurants are aware of that. I know. <laughs> yeah, they should. That's interesting. That would be on a weekend instead of, or, you know, instead of a, a weekday. So that's kind of interesting too. So well, I expect yeah. origamis from all both of you at our next <laughs> Oh, that'll <laughs> happen. <laughs> <laughs> all right. Well, anything special, exciting happening for the weekend? Go, Melinda. Um, no, just the usual. Just, you know, taking the dog for a walk, spending time with the kids. We might play a little Mexican train. That's a domino game. Oh. <laughs> it's okay. very exciting at our house. <laughs> That sounds great. We, we have our grandson's second birthday party tomorrow. Oh, he's going to be two. That, two that's so great. Yes. Oh my gosh! I remember showing his his little newborn picture on on air. So oh, that's lovely. That's wonderful. Get in, get in to be quite the little boy. Oh, little man, little guy. Two, it's so great. <laughs> well, I'll be hanging around this weekend, and um, uh, no just, band performances. No band performances, so mm -hmm. I'll be I'll be cleaning up and looking for new stories. And please reach out with your stories for people that are one hundred or any resources that you know of. Uh, we want to make sure that we share those. And Melinda, share what the phone number is or the website is for the Strength Shop. Sure. Yeah, the Strength Shop. If you want to text or call us, is six two six nine 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 four eight five zero forty eight fifty. Nice. All righty. Well, I want everybody to have a great weekend. Thank you very much to our veterans. Um, we are in your debt. And um, oh, you know what? I didn't talk about some of the resources. So um, actually, um, I don't know if people know, but it's called aid in attendance. And actually a widow to a veteran is also able to get that benefit as well. So if you want to call our office for any other veterans benefits, we would be happy to share those with you. 626-359-0108. And we will get that information out to you. And thank you so much. And we will see you next week. Bye, everyone. Have a good weekend. Thank you.